You're listening to the Southampton Delivery Pop Pop Podcast, a podcast dedicated to the Southampton Football Club and all of the SFC fans. Welcome to the Southampton Delivery Podcast, a podcast dedicated to the Southampton Football Club and all of the SFC fans. My name is Matt Markson. I'm the host of the show. And no matter where you are, no matter how you may be listening, thank you for making the show a part of your day. It may sound a bit different, uh, maybe a bit somber, um, nothing to do um, with anything other than having just watched my Ishida in Japan um, lose a two goal lead, lose uh, what looked to be a game that they had control of. Uh, for portions, and um, and that hurts, uh, not only because he is the last remaining Saints player or was the last remaining Saints player in the World Cup with Bednarak, Cedric, and Tadic all having already been eliminated from the tournament, um, but there is something about my Ishida, uh, about Saints, and Saints are the only connection I have to this World Cup at this point, um, with obviously with the USA and, and other countries that I am uh, affiliated with, uh, through heritage and all that, uh, not in it, but to watch Yoshida go through that, um, to play the game that he had, um, to, to kind of put it all on the line and not get through. Um, I know it's the beautiful game, but it's cruel sometimes as well. Um, you know, nobody expected Japan to be there. Nobody expected Japan, uh, to, to be two goals up against Belgium. That should have been a walk in the park for them, but the fact that Japan, uh, in some ways, like Sweden and like some of the other countries who have surprised people, um, they have managed to stick together, to execute a game plan, to cause disruption and prevent the bigger teams or the bigger players or whatever you want to say from really doing what they were uh, supposed to be able to do with relative ease. So uh, I am I am sad for Maya Yoshida, uh, but also very proud of him and very happy uh, to welcome him and Bednarak and Cedric all back um, into the squad after they take their uh, extended leave, I guess. And they that that leave, that that vacation, whatever they get, their holiday, depending on whatever you say, uh, well deserved. I think all of the representatives that Saints had in the World Cup uh, performed admirably. Um, proud of all of them, but especially proud of Maya Ishida. Um, you probably already know this because by the time this comes out. Um, this, these stats will have circulated, but um, Yoshida, two interceptions, 14 clearances, two block shots uh, today during that match, 14 clearances. Uh, if we add up the rest of them from the squad, that is seven, nine. He's got almost as many as the rest of the squad combined. He's the only person in double digits. He's the only person with more than five clearances. You know, the the only person who had... Uh, anything like that uh, for Belgium, uh, there isn't any. Vincent Company had five, and that is it. Uh, I don't know. I can't say enough about the uh, the game that Maya Ishida played uh, today uh, or yesterday, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, so uh, hats off to Maya Ishida and the rest of the squad. But um, I don't want to sound sad. My voice is probably hoarse from yelling uh, during the game. But this week, obviously, we have a podcast, as we do every week. Uh, this week, I talked with Andrew Walker, who is uh, the former host of Saints Podcast, different than the Saints FC Podcast. Now, the Saints Podcast ran um, not last season, but the season before uh, and the four or five seasons prior to that. Uh, and it was either biweekly or monthly, depending on what time you uh, picked it up. And it was great. And, and and Andrew is the guy kind of behind that, the guy who organized that, the guy who did that. Uh, I talked to him way back, I think, on episode two. Um, he was one of the first people I reached out to when I started the podcast. Um, and obviously with the Saints having signed uh, Mohamed El-Nusi, 
uh, this this week. Um, him coming from FC Basel and Andrew now living in Basel and being a season ticket holder at FC Basel, I figured this was the perfect opportunity to reconnect with him after a year and a half of not talking to him uh, and just kind of get his thoughts on the team, um, on the club, on the progress on last season, uh, and, and mostly uh, on the signings that we made, um, what El Nusi is and what he brings to the team and what his impact will be for us hopefully going forward. So uh, you can find him on Twitter at Saints Podcast. And also, uh, he's on Instagram at Andy Doobie A84. Um, I may have messed that up, but the link is in the show notes. Uh, just click on it; it will take you uh, there. So uh, we talk El Nusi, we talk the trip to China, we talk defenders, we talk uh, squad transfers, everything else, uh, all the normal kind of stuff. So let's jump to the interview now. I hope you enjoy it. I will talk to you on the other side. I'd like to welcome back to the Southampton Delivery Podcast, Andrew Walker, former host of, I think, the original Saints Podcast. Uh, he's at Saints Podcast on Twitter. Uh, he is in Switzerland. Uh, we got lots to talk about from World Cup to new signings. You're an FC Basel season ticket holder, so we have uh, our new signing, and we'll get to the pronunciation in a little bit. But we have a lot to talk about. But thank you take, for taking the time to, to join me in between World Cup matches. We're going to squeeze this in. Uh, so, so welcome and thanks. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, and I, and I did mention, I think the last time you were on was like episode two. So it's been, you know, over 70 episodes since you've been back. But, uh, when I saw, uh, where Muhammad El, El Nusi, El Nusi, I don't know what it is. Uh, when I saw he was on and I, and I saw that you were, uh, I remembered that you were an FC Basel season ticket holder. I figured this was the, the perfect opportunity. So uh, I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. Pleasure. Um, Hopefully I can offer you some insights from the Swiss league, but um, probably not a great deal, but I'll see what I can do. Ah, it'll be, it'll, it'll be great. Um, so I, I guess let's start. I mean, we just, we've just witnessed, and by the time this goes out on Tuesday, there will have been uh, several changes to the bracket and everything else, but we just witnessed uh, Russia beat Spain on penalties. Um, are, are you enjoying the world cup uh, from, from where you are? Yeah, it's been a great world cup, I think, hasn't it? It's in um, loads of um, kind of upsets and, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because in that first round, there was kind of all these upsets and somehow each team, each of those big teams that kind of didn't do so well, managed to sneak through, um, you know, Argentina snuck through and, and what have you. But but it's obviously tonight, Spain had just been knocked out. And um, yeah, it's getting to that point now where it gets really exciting. We, we were just talking before the podcast came on that it's actually kind of a boring game, wasn't it? The Russia game, but it was just, it ratchets up into intensity and intention as the game goes on. And yeah, it's great. I'm loving it. Yeah. And every, every little touch, every little, like, you know, every, just, you see one little opening and, and you, the, the, the likelihood of the player actually getting there is, is slim to none, but it doesn't matter because it's still there and you could just hope and you just, you're kind of on the edge of your seat the whole time. So uh, yeah. I'm glad we weren't trying to record when it was still going. Cause I wouldn't have been able to concentrate. <laughs> you know, I thought actually, I thought if we couldn't delay this, I was going to be watching the TV in one eye and then talking to you in the other. Yeah. And I expected to sort of jump and cheer or something uh, halfway through. So I'm glad we managed to push it back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and I'm slightly conflicted because I, I, I've been watching Spain and I haven't really enjoyed necessarily the way they play this uh, World Cup. And I remember back in 2010 uh, rooting against them, mostly just because everybody okay. here roots for them if, if Mexico is not playing them. Um, yeah. and, but then you have Russia and I'm a history teacher from America, so it's not really a great, um, <laughs> thing to, 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 to root for, but they are the underdog. And I tend to kind of think like, you know, that's what I want. I want the underdog to go through or at least give him a game. And so we got that, but, uh, I was, I, I thought the VAR decision was going to get him at the end. Um, it looked like there could have been two penalties on, on Ramos and, and PK, but you know, everybody's kind of, uh, you know, grappling in there, but then it didn't, they didn't give it. So. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a tense, a bit of a tough one. That I, I, on the BBC, they were just, uh, they were saying that they, uh, yeah, they were sure it was a stonewall penalty. I don't know. I mean, I think if it had been against my team, I think I'd have said the same, but I don't know. I felt like it was like there was grappling on both sides, but I don't know. Maybe it was a penalty, but either way, what's happened has happened. And, and I think, um, uh, you know, just to chuck in a bit of a, a standard cliche about World Cups, but, um, I think it's always nice when you get the home team. And, you know, all those celebrations when they got the, that was saved, the penalty save at the end there, uh -huh. and uh, the stadium was in, in raptures. I mean, it's great to see that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing to say, I guess, as well with Spain going out, is that, you know, I don't know if you kind of how much you're following the, the, the logic of England and whether we should come first in our group or second in our group. Uh -huh, yeah. The logic but, being, on, you know, you get into that sort of 
in a vertical commas easier side of the group uh, of the draw sorry and um suddenly the best team on on our side of the draw is maybe us maybe colombia maybe switzerland maybe croatia but that's it that's a yeah got to be one of the clearest paths to world cup final that i've i've ever known so it's exciting yeah, I think you'll be more than happy if, uh, as an England fan, if, if Sweden somehow upsets Switzerland, but maybe not given where you live. So we'll, we'll have to talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, looking at that other the other match that comes on in, in an hour from, from now, you, you have to favor Croatia. Denmark hasn't looked great, but it could just be, it could turn into another match that we just saw where one team's just not able to find the, the, the last kind of ball or, the, or you know. Yeah. Um, but we just have to wait and see. But um, yeah. Our, I don't know. As an England fan living living abroad, are you how, how are you feeling about England's chances uh, coming up? Obviously, Colombia and then either Sweden or Switzerland. But are are you kind of pulling for a an England Switzerland uh, quarterfinal, or, or what? What are you looking for? Um, yeah, I guess that'd be quite cool. Um, so there's a so I live in Basel. I think Switzerland itself has something like a quarter of the population um, are born from overseas, and I think in Basel that moves up to like a third of the population. So so you, it's really interesting watching a World Cup here more. In, in a different way even to London where I lived before um, in that you know you've got every nationality when you go to a bar to watch a game and I've done that a few times because there's so many outside bars and stuff and it's been great weather you know you've got Argentina in fact I started counting the, the number of shirts I found and I, I lost count eventually but like I would see people in like I don't think I saw Panama but I've seen Serbian I've seen Argentinian Colombian all sorts of shirts from all over the world so it's, it's great watching the World Cup here and, um, and then as for England I mean um, yeah, what, what you also get is quite a lot of it, uh, English fans. So um, it's nice. It would be really interesting to be in a bar uh, wearing my England shirt um, amongst uh, a bar full of Swiss uh, with a small pocket of English people, perhaps. It could be quite fun or maybe a little bit terrifying, depending on how it goes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I wear I wore my, my USA jersey um, when Mexico was playing just just out of spite kind of, um, and, 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 and it's, it's more for the, for the students cause they, they get a kick out of it and they, they, they want to give me some crap and that's fine. Um, but I didn't really think about it I, on my lunch. I tend to, during summer school, I tend to walk cause I'm listening to the daily podcast and trying to catch up and do all this stuff. But, um, I, I walk to the store and I, I go to this little Mexican market and I walk in and it's just, everybody in there is wearing a Mexico shirt and everybody yeah. like looks at the, the shaved head white dude wearing the USA <laughs> shirt. Maybe this is a bad call, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but what about the, the world cup in the US then? I mean, obviously you guys, um, I don't know how you threw that qualification away. Cause I mean, you were, you should, you should have done it the day, the game before, shouldn't you? But, but that aside, I mean, how is it with that in mind and, and the fact that you're not there, is it, is it kind of dampened it a bit? You know, I'm, I, I don't think so. I think enough of us have, have kind of are, are still really interested and I've been getting kind of messages from family members who are, you know, wanting to watch, uh, other countries or, or things like that. And and for me personally, it hasn't been a bit, um, that bad because I've been watching the saints players that are in there. Um, mm, so yeah. I've been able to focus on that and just kind of watch and enjoy the matches. And I, I don't, there's no pressure on me. I don't care who wins really. Um, yeah. but, but I would say that I was really worried that you were going to lose that kind of those people who are on the cusp of, uh, yeah. where the, where the world cup kind of pushes them into, to, to being a football fan. Um, I, I was worried we were going to lose that, but I, I still think that there's been enough of a push from our coverage from Fox here to, to root for your roots and to, to, to kind of root for all the people are the, the places your family's from. And so I think a lot of people yeah. have done that. Um, unfortunately my family's from Italy and Norway. Um, so I still can't even do that. Um, <laughs> okay. That's uh, too bad. it's okay. And then, um, you know, we, ha- there was the little bit of controversy Landon Donovan, uh, came out on a, on a Mexico um, ad basically uh, encouraging everybody to root for Mexico as our, as our North American kind of representatives. And, and okay. some people really lost it. Cause that's like, uh, you know, that's our, that's, that's our captain of our national team coming out yeah. you know, supporting the, our, our tribal. So it's uh that wasn't so great, but, um, overall, I think, I, I, I don't know what the, the TV numbers are, but I'm pretty sure enough people have been watching it. Yeah. And I guess with 2026 on the horizon, well, a little way on the horizon, but, um, that must've kind of, maybe that's built up some interest as well. Perhaps the fact that that was announced, I mean, was it the morning of the world cup right. uh, kicking off or whatever it was? Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a, that's a big, I mean, the United States is a big viewing I and mean, it's got a ton of people and a lot of people, you know, are, are, have the ability to watch it. And it's, some of the games are, are free to air, you know, so not all of them, but yeah. some of them. And so that, I mean, that you're losing out on that population. Um, if I was Fox, the, the company who spent all the money to, to broadcast it, I would be pretty upset, but I think they, they scrambled and got it done or they had a plan. I don't know one, one way or another. Yeah. Um, 
but it is they are the super conservative i don't want to get political but they are the super conservative kind of tv channel and they're encouraging everybody yeah. else to root for uh you know all of the other <laughs> nations which is i found comical but um, yeah that, that's the just irony me. yeah um all right well if you don't mind let's let's talk a, about saints just a, a little bit here um and if if England come up against Switzerland, uh, I will uh, I will be interested to hear your see your thoughts on Twitter just just on that because that'll that'll be interesting. Uh, so now that you've been in Switzerland for uh, two ish years, um, yep. is there what do you miss most about being home and being able to see St Mary's and Saints live? And do you miss that, or have you been able to fill that void with other coverage and uh, being an FC Basel season ticket holder and things like that? Yeah, well, I, I try to, but it's never it's not the same. Um, so I, I got. So last year, what was it last uh, last season? The start of last season, I I got um, uh, match day tickets for the Champions League, the three group stages. Um, that was cool, and I've been to one or two other Basel games before. Um, so I saw in the Champions League, they beat Man United. It was quite cool, quite exciting. And a friend of mine that I went with, we decided, oh, actually, maybe we'll maybe we'll kind of try. He, he's a big football fan. He's Dutch. Um, had a season ticket um, at NEC Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Um, so he kind of had a hole, a football shaped hole in his uh, life. Uh, and so did I, with not being at the LDC Saints. So we both kind of, yeah, did that. And I've had a season ticket just for the last half of the season because they have year tickets here rather than sort of season tickets. Okay. But, um, yeah, so I've, I've tried to, uh, to fill that hole as well, right? but it's, it's, of course, it's not the same. Um, you know, you, in, my, in my case, I grew up in Southampton. It's my team that I've supported all my life. So, um, you know, you do miss that buzz of like a match day against St. Mary's and, mm-hmm. I, I suppose the camaraderie with your mates and having a few beers and the, you know, anyone, you know, who, who goes through that process of, you know, have the, the routine that you follow. I miss all of that stuff, of course, but um, yeah, but um, I try and get back as much as I can. I, I need, I saw one game last season, which is the, the, the lowest amount of games I've seen since I, I was about eight years old or something. So, uh, but this year I hope to rectify that and go to, I don't know, a few more. And it kind of ties in, hopefully, um, if Christmas, um, if there are more home games at Christmas, that helps as well. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, this week is good. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, and uh, any chance you're going to start an FC Basel podcast at any point soon? Or is that, is that not happening? Uh, actually, the mate of mine who said to me, oh, you should do a Saints po- a Southampton podcast, um, who I used to go to football with quite a few years ago. Uh, he was like, oh, you should do a Basel podcast. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, you know, actually, when we come on to uh, Mohamed El Nusi in, in a moment, um, one of the things I'll say is a bit of a caveat is often I go and it's quite a sociable thing. It's like uh, for anyone who goes to like baseball or cricket games or whatever, like mm-hmm. you go there because you can drink in the stands in, in Denmark, uh, Denmark, in Switzerland. Um, so we kind of we sit there and we have like two or three beers during the game. So I'd have to say my concentration levels dip after about <laughs> 50, 60 minutes. Um, so don't expect too much uh, insight from me, but, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't think I'll be doing a podcast anytime soon. Uh, I don't quite know enough about it. Yeah, no, that's, it's, uh, it's nice to just be able to enjoy. I guess it's kind of similar to my world cup, uh, uh, exploits here. You just, you just watch and enjoy it and it's all, it's all good. And if you decide, you know, I got to go do something else, uh, you, you, your concentration goes elsewhere. It's, it's okay. Cause nobody's counting on you to, to document every last detail that's, that's been happening. So, yeah, exactly. All right, so let let's let's go ahead and talk. Uh, we'll just start with Muhammad. You said El Nusi. Um, I, I think yes. if, if we can keep it with that, I think every all of the Saints podcasts. Because by the way, like since you've left, there have been um, an influx uh, of podcasts. Yeah. Um, and so thank you for paving the way for for all of us. It, it's been nice. Um, it's good. You know, it's great because we. I think we we were talking earlier, but uh, we started and there wasn't a podcast. Um, and it was actually yeah, my mate was like. Yeah, well, why, why don't you do one? Because we were chatting about it one day, and, and and we set it up, and we went for like five or so years, and and it's funny because during that time that a couple got set up, and then lasted for a short period of time, but then sort of went away again. Um, but we were only there, you know, we were the only ones, so it was great that um, loads of other people have jumped on that because I know that there's an appetite, you know, I like to listen to what other Saints fans have got to say, so it's great to hear that to others that like yourself are, are, are putting out the content and are dedicated to it, especially you. I mean, you're doing it once a week. That is tough going i mean i don't know whether for many many people listening maybe they've not probably done a podcast before and it's hard work we went down to like i think once a month because we were basically too lazy to do it any more regular than that and uh it's hey, good on you oh, it going. appreciate it yeah I'll, I'll, I'll do my best and as long as uh the people currently sitting at the table behind me eating breakfast uh agree <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'll be all right um so anyway 
Muhammad El Nusi, um, you know, high highlight videos, YouTube videos, they all that all everybody looks great. Um, you know, yeah. FIFA stats look great, but he looks to be, you know, he looks to be exciting. He looks to like to run at people. He looks to be able to shoot and pass and do all this stuff. But, um, you know, kind of from your experience, uh, whether early in the game or later in the game, whatever, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. what kind of, what are we going to get with him? Yeah. So I'll just, just for the context, a bit boring, but Basel uh, tactically wise, they play kind of either three at the back with, and then go into like a, a three, five and then drop deep when they're playing a better team. Mm-hmm. Typically that's in the champions league. And, and then often when they're playing in the Swiss league, they'll play at the back four. Um, and then it's kind of a, a bit of a four, four, two, or it can go to a four, three, two, one point is, so he'll play, I've seen him play kind of on that wide left role. Um, and I've seen him play kind of slightly more inside, not as a number 10, but kind of, you know, if you like maybe, a um, the, you know, the left side of a front three, I've seen him play in that position. Okay. Um, and, and what he does, he's, He's very direct. Uh, he's got. I've said this on Twitter a few times, so people may have heard this already. But he's quite direct. He's got a lot of pace. Um, he's got. I mean, you know, you've seen the numbers on his assists. He gets lots of assists. Um, he scores a few as well. I mean, um, well, I think what is it, eleven or so goals? Is it last season? I think in Switzerland, I could be wrong. Um, so he scores a few. Um, I think the big question for me is. How does he adapt to the Premier League? Because as much as I love going to see Basel play, and you know, I would say they're my second team now, the Swiss League is a level below, and I don't want to categorise that in terms of the Championship, whatever. I don't know; it's hard to say, but it for sure is. You know, um, so it's the question is, can he, you know, step up and, and do that at a higher level? I mean, he did that against City um, at the Etihad when I think he scored twice. Um, so he, you know, he has done it in in, in single games. Um, but that's probably the only question mark, and and that's no fault of him. That's just the fact that he hasn't had a chance to prove that yet. Yeah, just on that on that note, when you talk about uh, maybe the level being a little bit different, um, is it is it a less physical league? Is the Swiss league, you know, uh, it, is he going to come here and have to deal with kind of uh, I don't know, just more people kind of being up against him and and being willing to to, to leave a tackle in and things like that, or is the Swiss league a, kind of maybe similarly physical, just maybe not as uh, tactically or technically uh, advanced? I think it's probably it's probably not quite as physical. Um, so I'll give an example. I was for the for the United game uh, in the Champions League when Basel won actually. But um, in the first half, I was so I was sat behind the goal. Um, I don't know, ten, fifteen rows behind, so pretty close. I could see the players pretty well. And um, I actually we had a conversation about the fact that you could really tell the difference physically in the size. Like I'm talking upper body kind of size of the Basel bat line, and um, they had a couple of bigger players in there, but in terms of, the, I think they were defending a corner, so they, were, you know, he had a lot of bodies in there. Right. Um, versus versus United, um, and even obviously, you know, the, the likes of Lukaku and and Pogba, and I think Smalling, I can't remember if Smalling was playing, but you know, and, and Jones, like, yeah, all right, they are bigger guys, they're bigger than most players. But it was even the likes of like Lingard and Rashford, and who who aren't like you know stock, um, you know, solid wide players. No, no, no. You wouldn't say they are. Um, even those guys just look like. Kind of like I don't want to say men versus boys because it's kind of disrespectful, but like kind of look like that. And ultimately, I mean, they lost, so you know, good on Basel. But so I think there there possibly is a physical thing. Um, I mean, I, I guess as well, probably the pace of the game is going to be something that you know we always hear that, don't we, about the English Premier uh-huh. League being like uh, having the fastest pace and players that come from Spain or Italy, which are good leagues, you know, and Germany struggle. So I think there's probably going to be an adjustment there. But I don't know. If, I don't think that should be a problem for him because he. He's fast and, um, you know, he's got a lot of energy. So I don't think that part of it should be an issue. Um, but yeah, I guess there's probably a, a little bit of a betting in period there. Sure, sure. And and I, I, we would expect that with the other signing that's coming over from Scotland as well. That's That that league looks to be, you know, uh, rough. It looks it looks to me every time I watch one of those, one of their highlight videos, it always seems like they're on the brink of a fist fight. Uh, yeah. For, but, <laughs> but but maybe it's just the highlights and, and whatever. And maybe nah, it's because it's, it's always Celtic and Rangers or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, you know, <laughs> I think there's some truth in, in, in terms of, well, maybe not the fighting, but yeah, it's a, it's a really physical league and um, maybe even more physical in the championship. Actually, it's um, from what I see of it. I don't watch, I don't watch regular Scottish Premier League games, but I've watched them in the past. And I think you might be right. All right. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see. I I, I so far, I'm, I'm I'm feeling okay about the window. I'm feeling I'm actually, and that's that's an understatement. I'm, I'm actually quite excited. I think we're doing, um, it, you know, there was a, there were a few weeks where everybody was like, oh my god, you know, we're not making signings before the World Cup starts, and then all of a sudden here we go, and we're on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, possibly with another uh, with I think it's Marlon Santos uh, potentially coming yeah. in. So I mean, 
hey, uh, things things are getting done and wheels are wheels are are working behind the scenes, so that's okay. But um, El Nusi does bring some some Champions League and some some Europa League experience. Uh, if I'm correct in thinking that FC Basel have won some trophies during his time that he's been there, um, yeah. Do you think? Yeah, and, and I don't know if you can answer this, but like as he's coming to a team, a Saints team that's kind of devoid of confidence in a lot of, in a lot of ways after, after kind of the, the season we had the past two seasons, do you think he's, he's going to get there and go like, oh, what did I walk into? Or do you think he can walk in and go like, like, Hey, we're, we got to change this and we have to kind of, you know, have a better mentality. Do you think he can pass that on or is he, is he doesn't seem like that type of player? Um, I mean, I, I think for sure he's going to be confident. I mean, he's for a start, he's obviously just made this move. So he's going to have that natural sort of confidence from the fact that he's just made this probably quite exciting move in his career. So I think that's obviously going to be a good thing. And I think any new, you know, new blood does that genuinely, generally, actually, whether they've been winning stuff in their league or, or not. I think that that is good to have that kind of excitement and, a, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 some fresh from fresh influence and, and, and thoughts and stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, he's one, he's one, Actually, funnily enough, last year Basel. So I, I buy a season ticket, and Basel lose the league for the first time in seven years or something. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and not by two points, by about fifteen. I think it might have been eighteen. So, uh, so he didn't win anything this year, but he did win the double last year. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's he's comes from a winning mentality. I think I was reading. Um, I don't know if you um, have saw the article on Reed Southampton. Really great analysis of of Mohamed El Nusi. So I'd recommend. Um, I tweeted that earlier, so people haven't seen it go and have a look at it because it was very good um and i think he won some things in norway so i think that's really really good um and then in terms of i don't know it's interesting about the rest of the squad i mean you know it, we had a bit of a terrible season but ultimately like it probably kind of ended on a high in some ways you know we, we showed some grit didn't we yeah um so i would hope that you know there's there's a sort of a, a platform from which we can build on next year yeah we, we showed some grit that i didn't think we had um i, yeah. I said repeatedly uh, towards the end of last year after that Chelsea defeat in the league, not, not in the, the semifinal, but in the league, I said, that's yeah. it. Like we're done. And I felt really, really kind of bad for, for saying it. Cause I didn't want anybody to think I was quitting on the team. Cause that wasn't the case, but I just think like, I didn't see that we had it in us and I was proved wrong and I'm totally happy with that. Like, you know, couldn't, could not be more ecstatic, but I was already trying to figure out, you know, how, how can I pay to watch championship football uh, here in the States and trying to do that kind of stuff. And I was glad I just got oh, to throw it yeah. all out. So uh, <laughs> I, I was, I'm with you. I, I like, cause you can, you can buy that app, can't you? Where it's like, a, I think it's like a hundred pounds a year or something mm -hmm. and you can watch like every game live. But so I, yeah, I was the same. I was convinced we were down. Um, but yeah, Hey, we managed to managed to get it uh, sorted just in, in the nick of time. Yeah. And it, and it looks like we're on the way to, to kind of making sure that maybe that doesn't happen again. So that's, that's always good. Um, yeah. Now, now there was one quote that some people latched onto, and I don't know if this is reading too much into it or what, but he said uh, basically that that Saints looks like a great place for him to to develop for another portion of his career or something like that. Um, yeah. and, and I think this goes back to the Saints transfer policy that we've had where we bring in these players who have kind of these attributes and maybe have won some things and are exciting and they develop here for two or three years and they get better and they move on. Yeah. Otherwise, like my, my, my kind of view on it is otherwise, El Nusi's not coming to Southampton, you know, like this isn't because based on the season we had last year, there's no reason for him to leave a, a team that is probably going to challenge for the league in, in Switzerland, maybe to yeah. to come to a league that or to a team that just finished and, um, you know, down at the bottom of the table, unless uh, he's going to be putting in, um, you know, putting himself in the shop window for a move in two or three years, which honestly, I, I think I'm okay with. And I don't, I, that might get me in trouble with saying that, but, um, do you think do you think that's a that's a problem if that's how he's seeing it if he's coming here to develop and look to move to to a bigger club? Um, I mean, one point I'd love to know what how they're pitched the club by the club. You know, when they when the agent is chatting with him, what is that? What is the conversation? Is it you know he'll get football, he'll get a chance to play in the Premier League, which is big you know big league in the world, uh, the biggest exposure, and therefore you know who knows what happened? You know, you might get a move to Liverpool afterwards or something. I'd, I'd love to know that because. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the club are never going to tell us that because they're right. not going to do that, are they? Although are they saying that Ralph Kruger told the world we're a small club, so I mean, you know, maybe they will. Um, but but no, so uh, he's Canadian, uh, but, by the way. But, yeah, Just, I know. Point that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll leave that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's reality, isn't it? I mean, it's. I don't. I don't like the idea that if they're thinking that someone's only going to use us to go on to better things. But on the other hand, I mean if he's got the talent and he can go and play for United or whatever, 
it's kind of difficult because you only have a short window of, in your career and you can only do, you know, you've got to make the decision, the best decision for yourself and your family, I, I guess. Um, but as long as they're putting in whoever this player, whoever these players are, whether it's him or anybody else, as long as they're putting in 110%, blah, 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 and really trying for us when we're when they're playing for us, then I suppose, I don't know, it's not a lot you can say really, is there? Yeah, no, I, I, think, I, I think if they're going to come here and do it, then then great. And if if they got teams that come in looking at them, in two years or, you know, three, whatever, then, then great. Because they, they've obviously earned that. If, I think if they come here with the, with the idea that I only have to stay here for two years and then I get to go somewhere else like that, that's, a di- that's the difference, you know? Um, yeah. But, but we'll never, that, like we said, we'll never know if that's how he's coming in or not. But I, from everything that's been said and everything that I've seen, like, you know, it looks like he's going to come here and do the best he can, you know? Yeah, I think so. And it's almost like a don't ask, don't tell, you know, we, we don't want to know whether if that's their motivation. We want to know that you just got you. You know, fans are a simple bunch. You just got to feed us the the stuff we want to hear. Yeah, oh, they're a great club. We've got you know good talent, good youth players. Oh, I think they're excited. We can get to Europe. Like really, you hear you hear that stuff and you're like, oh great, yeah, it makes us feel better about our club, doesn't it? So yeah. Um. So so he is the second player that we brought in 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 this window. Uh, we also brought in Stuart Armstrong. Um. On the way out. Uh. You have Jeremy Pierre who's left. Uh, his contract wasn't renewed. Uh, Florent Gardo, same thing. Um, mm. and, and and Tadic, I think, is is the big loss. Um, some people lo- maybe may not think that, but Tadic is one of my favorite players. But um, in him, just just on uh, on him really quickly. Uh, what do you think? What do you think we're gonna miss most about him? And and how do you how are you gonna remember his time at Saints? Because I think that it, we tend to fall into one of two camps in terms of of how we think about him. Yeah, I, I was probably quite a big critic, to be fair. Um, my view on him was that he would turn up one every four games and do something great. And then the rest of the time, he would do stepovers and fall over and dive. And and, and I've been really... This is this is how I was... You know, if he hadn't just left, this is what I would, my honest appraisal of him would be. He's got great talent, but he doesn't show it enough. Um, kind of now that he's left, and he's left in a, in a, in a way that kind of, you know, we everyone's amicable. And, and, and you're hearing all these things like from... Adam Blackmore, the local radio commentator, saying like, you know, what a nice guy he was, and and you know the fact that he seemed to respect the club. Um, he, you know, <laughs> there's been a few jokes on Twitter around the fact that you know, every time we would sing his name, he would give us a wave, but maybe should <laughs> yeah. have taken a corner. Um, you know, but you know, I I, I like him. I, ultimately, I think he, he did a good job for us. He, you know, actually his numbers are pretty good, aren't they? He's got a lot of assists, um, and he scored two goals. Was it two goals or one goal? But that that goal in the in the, in the running that you know may have who knows what that sort of goal does to the the history of Southampton Football Club in terms of where we go and and, and that crossroads that we we're at. So um, I've got to say, uh, all being said, he he, he worked he, he worked his socks off for us, and and I wish him all the best. And and you know maybe uh, I'd like to see him go on and win a title and and get in the champ, Champions League and do all of that stuff that you you know you couldn't do at, at Southampton. Right, right. Yeah, so 27 assists during his time at the club and during that time and obviously some players came and went and left and all that stuff, but that that ranks first over over that that four-year period. Um second in minutes, third in goals, he's tied. Um and when I ran the numbers, I was really kind of like, are you serious? He's got 20 goals over 4 years, which is not a huge return. Um yeah. and that's tied for third and the guys at the top of that are are Pella and, and Mane and then he's tied with Shane Long and it's like, man, we got to get somebody up there uh, cuz that's yeah. just not enough, you know. Um, yeah. but, but I, I don't know. I always thought that he had a, a decent amount of, of, of strength, maybe he lacked a little bit of pace, but I, I always thought he was a better kind of, I would take him every day over a guy like Buffal who doesn't seem to be able to yeah. stand up to, to, to opposition and, and hold the ball up and, and do those things. And, uh, I think he's just kind of a, the type of player that I like, even if he didn't show up all the time, I, I, I would definitely say that I, I defended him maybe more often than he deserved. Um, but I can't, I just like him. So that's just what, what's going to happen. Um, you know, the thing is, well, maybe I think what was at the root of, of my feeling was the fact that he's a good player and he could, and he could offer, he could be such a better player. Like, it's, But somehow, he, I don't know, sometimes you'd make silly little, or not mistakes, but bad decisions mm-hmm. in, in terms of picking a pass or giving the ball away. And it was like those things. I'm like, these are small things, but, but you could be so good. And I think that's where my frustration um, came from. Him. It wasn't. It wasn't like a lack of heart, a lack of, heart or a lack of commitment. Um, you know, you can maybe look at Buffao and I don't know. I mean, 
you know, the way he kind of reacted to was the goal against um, to Pellegrino, uh, which turns out Pellegrino was one of the worst managers we've ever had. But, right. you know, the way he kind of ran up to the manager and like went into his face and you're like, oh, OK, that's not great. <laughs> that's not kind of big. That's not being a team player, is it? No. Um, and you didn't get any of that from Tadic. So I or at least I didn't see any of that. So um, I, that's why I kind of it was more frustration than anything, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, things Tadic liked. He liked when people called his name. Uh, and he liked yeah. taking his clothes off at the end of the game. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That last, <laughs> that last, the lap of honor or whatever it's called. Like he, I, I was really surprised when he was just all the way down. I was just like, man, there's nothing left, and you just you've given yeah. it all away. And that's, you know, those are pictures. You know, there there are a lot of uh, of women on Saints Twitter who are just <laughs> all about those pictures, and you know, it makes me laugh, and it's great. So, um, and I guess at that point, I, I heard that um, I heard an interview with Mark Hughes. He said. He, he came in and basically after the end of the season, they had a conversation and he said, Look, I, I want to go. I think, you know, he implied Ajax or even said Ajax. Um, so I suppose he knew that was his farewell, I guess. Um, and, and what he did in that running was he led. He was one of the, the leaders, wasn't he? He was uh, one of the old, older heads. Um, and I think we owe him a lot. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, especially if you knew he, he wanted to move. He he very easily could have just like taken taken his hands off and yeah. said I'm not I'm going to make sure I don't get hurt I have a World Cup coming up I have a move yeah. you know all these things but um, you know yeah so he he did I think uh, a great job for us but um, it means less coming from me because because I like him so um, but yeah I, I I will remember him fondly and I think people will too and I think you know had he been able to play with a guy like Pella for for a, yeah. a, a few years longer and have a little bit more support or have a guy that he works well with uh, maybe he could have been better for us but but yeah uh, and, and it, you're absolutely right i was thinking it's the same just in that com- in that last uh in that last moment he with that partnership he had with uh, with pella was really good i think that was when he was absolutely his best so yeah, it's a shame that we've never replaced pella you know we we that was I, I feel like one of the core things that went wrong with us in the last two years is that we didn't replace those players at the spine you know the the wanyama the uh, Pella, Fonte, um, latter more latterly than Van Dyke. We didn't we didn't replace those players that just were really really good for us. And hopefully we're starting to do that with a couple of signings we've made. Yeah, absolutely. And and kind of on that note, we you know the the club has now gone to China. They took a, a large list of players um, mm. over there for preseason. They're going to have um, I think they have five preseason matches scheduled um, and. Some of the players missing from that list, though, uh, Carrillo and Buffal, neither have won on the plane to China. Uh, Carrillo being our, our our record signing, and, and not yeah. on, uh, that doesn't bode well for maybe him staying at the club, or do you think maybe it's a it's, it's an injury we don't know about, or what do you you know what do you make about those two specifically? Do you think they're going to be around? So I didn't know that actually. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, in the case of Carrillo, I think. Uh, Mark Hughes doesn't like him, does he? He, didn't, he wasn't even on the bench in most, many of the running mm-hmm. games, I seem to remember. Um, I, I've always been quite like trying to be quite balanced and fair and, you know, like, oh, I'll give the guy a chance. But all right, he, he didn't play. Yeah, he looked rubbish, didn't he? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't think, I don't see him having, having a future us based on how, how he played and then how Mark Hughes seemingly felt about him. Um, then as for Buffal, I... Uh, I don't know. I'm also torn on him. Um, maybe he has an injury. Don't know. Uh, but he didn't feature in the running. And, you know, we were just talking about players of heart and spine. And he, I don't know. He doesn't look like he's got that for me. He, he's, he's the player. If, if Tadic turns up one in every four, maybe I'm being unfair, but he turns up one in every 10, doesn't he? Or one in every 20. I mean, I think we get rid of him personally. I don't, yeah. I don't see. Yeah. He's got he's clearly got talent, but I don't know whether the Premier League is the league for him. I remember looking at the, uh, the pictures just from training that only came out late, late during the week. And it was, you know, Hey, he's back there. And, and people picked up on that and noticed that. And then, you know, it was just as quick though, that he wasn't on the trip or he wasn't on the plane. So it's, right. you know, it, it doesn't look like it, that, that's going to go well for him. Um, and, and I, I've also heard stated, you know, um, uh, El Nusi maybe in terms of, of attributes, less like Tadic, more like Buffal, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. And so maybe that's the replacement there. And, and you know, and that, of course, that means maybe we have to go find another Tadic. But I don't think I don't, I, I don't I, maybe the club isn't doing that. They, you don't you don't replace like for like all the time. Sometimes you, you want to move in a slightly different direction. So we'll see kind but, of but, what they do. But I do think, though, if we aren't going to keep Buffal and 
I mean, I just as we've talked, I just kind of remembered. He, of course, he got um, put in the under twenty threes, didn't he, or mm-hmm. the under whatever it was um, last year by Hughes because of his attitude or whatever. Which is, yeah, again another reason why I don't really think he's great to have around. I mean, if that's the case, then really we've got in terms of a creative attacking sense, um, El Nusi, who's never played in the Premier League. Um, I don't know a lot about Armstrong. Is he? He's like a. Is it box to box midfielder? What's his story? Yeah, yeah. So more of a Stephen Davis type. Um, okay. He he could play in that ten, but it'd be more of a defensive ten. Um, he likes yeah. to get forward. He likes to shoot from distance. Uh, he could in a in a four two three one play alongside Romeo. That's probably uh, what I would what I would see as his best position. Uh, right. But but yeah, he, he I think he's he's going to be more of a maybe a little, a little bit more physical going forward. Uh, I, I guess. So in which case we we, we have one attacking player um, attacking midfielder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean we don't. We got we got Sims. We got McCar- um, McQueen. Um, but what I mean is, I mean unless we think Buffao is, uh, you know, there's yeah he, he's got a future. I think we should be getting. Um, uh, I think we probably need another attacking midfielder. Because uh, yeah. I think you know again last season the biggest problem was goals, isn't it? Well, actually there's a lot of problems, but scoring goals was for sure a big issue for us. Um, yeah, so I think probably unless we get, uh, keep Buffal and have a future for him, then we need to get somebody else probably. Yeah. Um, any other positions on the on the squad that you, you think need need addressing by the club over this over this window? Uh, well, obviously you mentioned is it Santos the the um, yeah yeah Barcelona defender? Um, yeah, I mean we need a defender. I think it's a tricky one. Actually, Ollie, who I used to um, do the Saints podcast with, who maybe some of your listeners used to listen to it. Um, he was here in Basel just, just today and then he left. He was here for the weekend. Um, we were having a conversation about this because, I mean, I personally think we need another centre-back because I think all of the centre-backs we've got have all got potential, um, but they they're all they're all feel like they need to be by side someone who's actually not got the potential but is proven. And, right. of course, that's what happened with Fonte and that's what happened with Van Dijk. They were the, the you know, those sort of the linchpin. Um and then, if that's the case, if we do get another centre back and he is that, the you know the first choice centre back, if you like, then I don't know how you play, how you satisfy four other centre backs. Um, and it's hard. I, I don't know which one. And assuming that you maybe get rid of one, I don't know if you would or you wouldn't. You know, you need depth in your squad, of course. But mm-hmm. you know, even if you play three at the back, two aren't going to play. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's a tricky one. I don't know if you have any views on. Are there any? What do you think? Do you think we would have five centre backs? Do we need another one? I. I... I'm too nice. I think, you know, like I, 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 I struggle to drop people on FIFA, you know, and, you know, uh, and so it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think we do. Uh, and we need, like you said, we need somebody who is, we don't have anybody who's physical enough. I don't think. Um, mm. but you look at, at, at Stevens, who I think is 23 or 24. So he's, yeah. he's getting to that point in his career where he needs to be established. Um, you have Ben Rack, who is much younger than that, who had some mistakes in the world cup. Um, got caught off guard for 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 a goal. I think against Senegal, um, things like that. But he's, you know, as a, a, you know, it's only him and Yoshida who even made the 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 uh, the, the World Cup as as center backs. And so it, it'd be hard to and harsh on him, to, I think, to to drop him, especially after he came on and and played so well for us at the end of the season. Um, yeah. You have Stevens, who I think people like, and I think Hoot would be the one that people would say maybe needs to to move out of the way. But I think he's our only left left footed center back. So I think if you're right. going to play a back three, he's got to play that left side. So where does Santos come in? He doesn't seem like he's that strong. He seems like he's decent on the ball, but he doesn't seem like the big kind of physical uh, presence that we would need. Which is which is what I thought we would we would get because we lost that in both um, Van Dijk, who could kind of do it all, and and Font, who is even uh, more of a physical uh, presence than than the people we have now. Yeah, it's funny because I with with who I I was when he first signed him and, and and I remember one game where he put this like I don't know long seventy yard ball across the pitch from sort of like left back or whatever or uh-huh. you know left left side of centre back to the right wing and I'm like wow this guy's you know he can play he's technically a good player you know he looked quite good on the ball um, and and then I felt like oh actually you know I felt like he had a pretty poor season and then towards the end I, I felt like he suddenly like was sort of stepping up into be the Maybe not the lead centre back because perhaps Yoshida was that, but certainly stepping up. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe we don't need to get rid of anyone, but um, but the point is, I think we definitely do need another centre back. Um, I also think, and I mean we've already touched on this, but you know the fact that Shane Long um, hasn't scored that many goals, of course, and um, isn't going to score many goals. He's going to run his heart, run hard, but he's not going to score a bag full of goals. Austin keeps getting injured. 
Gabbiadini, I think the jury's out. I think we all love him. Um, uh-huh. and we loved him anyway. And then he went and scored that goal against Swansea. Um, but yeah, I think we, we, we'd be daft not to buy another striker who we can see as our, you know, num- number, our main number nine. Right. And, and for that reason, I think that's why, you know, Carrillo has to go unless he's going to be yeah. that guy. And I don't think he is. So, um, yeah. And one thing that was mentioned, um, uh, by Adam Leach, uh, Southern Daily Echo uh, writer yeah. and, and also does uh, the Total Saints podcast. He mentioned last year that our club was built, you know, our squad was built by the club to, to compete in multiple competitions. And so when we yes. were able to go deep into, you know, during the Europa League, um, having that, that, that cup run, um, those things, we had the squad to be able to cope with that. And then last year we got, you know, there was no European football. We were knocked out of the EFL Cup early on. Um, and that meant that, you know, we had guys that were going to be star for minutes. And so you have all these guys kind of going out on loan and you have people who are unhappy and you have people that I just frankly forgot were on the team because I hadn't seen them yeah. all year, you know? And so if we bring in that, that another center back, I think you're going to rely on, on having a, a center back pairing, maybe that plays the EFL cup and things like that. Uh, and does yeah. those other things, uh, that, that, that could be okay. Um, but it, you know, as soon as that's over or as you get deeper in the competition, then what do you do? And that's, I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. Yeah, and I think I, I completely agree at that point. We we totally had a squad that was was designed. Well, it was an, ended up being a weaker squad, but in that season, well, last, as as we look at it now, sort of two seasons ago, I suppose when Puel was in charge and we had the Europa League, that was yeah, it was completely designed for that. But then we moved, went to next season and we we didn't have the games. Um, um, yeah, and and actually, you know, for me, the biggest problem with that was the likes of Sims. You know, Sims looked really good in that in that little chance he got um, in, under Puel. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see, we saw McQueen a few times, I think, in that season, because, of course, you know, we had so many games. And then uh, it was difficult because, and, and Target, of course, who had a great season last year at Fulham. Right. Um, so, you know, forgetting those some of those other players, but like some of the younger players, um, it's tricky because in some ways, maybe, maybe I, in terms of back to my previous point about an attacking midfielder, maybe he's thinking, oh, you know, I've got Sims and I've got McQueen here. Um, all right, they're young, but Sims is, they're not that young anymore. I mean, I, I think Sims is what, like 20 or so? I mean, you look at the England squad at the World Cup and many of the players are that sort of age and they're playing for their country at World Cup. So I think it's, um, I would love to see those guys get a chance because I think Sims look quality. He's such a direct player, you know, in that goal that he set up for Shane Long to get to the, the League Cup final where he burst through and put the ball on the plate. It was a brilliant play. And then you've got McQueen, who can play left back or left wing. I think there's a lot of uh, options there as well. Um, I, I guess the issue is, you know, like you said, we've taken a big squad. So I think there has to be some, some cuts there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it'd be fascinating what happens with, he's put Armstrong in. So who's going? Because you've uh, Romeo, Lamina, Davis, um, work, James Will prowse That's a lot of players plus Armstrong competing for a centre midfield spot. And you wonder, you wonder if they're going to stick somebody else out on the right. You're going to stick either Ward Prowse or somebody else out there. Um, you know, and that's true. Yeah. But also then if we play that, that, that three, five, two, um, you know, you got, you have Hoiberg, you have Lamina, you have a lot Hoiberg, of guys who, yeah. are, who are going to compete for that, that, that spot. And man, and like you said, that, that's a, it's a tough one, but I don't know. We will have to see maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea what we're going to do, but I, I am, you know, most people don't say this probably, but I am looking forward to, uh, them playing, uh, preseason just to see, just to see who's on the yeah. pitch, just to see what the formations are like, you know, the results don't matter that much. I just want to see who's playing where and how that, how that moves as we get closer and closer to the season. Um, because I, I really would enjoy us coming out and having a strong start to the season as, as would every fan. I think that maybe goes without saying, but, um, yeah. but yeah, so that's that, but, um, c- kind of, I don't know. Anything else that kind of sticks out to you about the club that you, you'd like to make sure we, we discuss? Uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, I think we just need, I think it's been good. We've, uh, we've had, um, relatively swift business, although, yeah, like you said, people have been complaining and I was probably a bit frustrated as well, but, um, yeah, I think the key is, isn't it? Because the, the transfer window in England this year or in the, I think in England, um, and across the whole of the leagues, uh, shuts on, what is it? The, the day before the kit, the, um, the season begins. So mm-hmm. something like the 9th um, of August. So it's, um, yeah, it's great. We've done early business and, and it's great that, you know, at least two of those guys are on the plane and hopefully a couple will follow. Yeah. Hopefully we, uh, 
hopefully we, we get it done soon and it, it'll be, it'll be interesting. And I, I always get, you know, I, I think watching from afar, um, it's kind of going back to the world cup a little bit, watching from afar, it's everybody all season, you know, England play poorly in a, in a, or they, they win a, a, a qualifier or a friendly and but they don't necessarily look impressive and everybody kind of get, you know, Oh, you know, we're, this is going to be terrible. We're going to get, yeah. we get beaten all this stuff. And then you know, the tournament comes and, and, you know, within the first kick of the ball, everybody's, you know, yelling, it's coming home. And it's kind of, <laughs> for me, it's, it's kind of funny because I have no, I, I have no kind of connection to this because I wasn't, talking to people as much as I am now last time the world cup was on. So, uh, and and so I I feel like I'm that way with saints a little bit. Like we all look at it now and we go, Oh man, you know, we don't have the players. We don't went on this, we don't that. And we need to do this. And then as the season comes, like I will, I will be, I don't want to say overly optimistic, but you know, cautiously optimistic about our, our, our chances in the squad. And I always, I always think that our, our players can do better. Like I always think they have the ability to do, to do it, even if they don't, um, which is, uh, the only thing in my life that I look at that way, everything else, if you ask my kids <laughs> or my wife, I am the most pessimistic person ever, uh, unless it comes to saints. So I don't, I don't know, but, um, but you know what? I think you're, you're right to be pos- pos- uh, optimistic when it, when we comes to saints, because there's no way we should have been in that relegation battle last year. We, we were poor, so we deserve to be there. But in terms of the squad, um, right. I know that, you know, I wasn't the biggest pro fan. I, I did, wouldn't have necessarily sacked him when we did, but we made that choice. But, you know, he took us to eighth. And again, that was, there's some artificial kind of element to that because I think we were only three or four points above like seventh, whatever, of 16th or something. But point being, like that was a decent squad. And there were a lot of poor teams in the Premier League last year. So I think with a decent manager, and I, and I think we've got a decent manager, and, and a few important signings we definitely need to make, um, you know, filling some of those gaps that have been there for a couple of years now with Pella and Mane we never replaced. Um, I think, you know, we, we, I'm not saying we're going to come seventh, but we should definitely not get in relegation zone again right. uh, or, or a relegation battle again. Um, I think with a couple of those extra players, I think we, we, we should be middle of the road. We, who knows what we can do? But um, it was uh, the fact that we employed a, a pretty appalling manager last year, I think, and maybe some player attitude, who knows. But um, we should be optimistic because we've got a decent squad and, and hopefully we'll only add a few extra uh, quality players to it. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think that we started last year, there was a gloom hanging over the club and it was left over yeah. from the season before and it just never went away. There was never the kind of vibrant positivity that needed to be there. Uh, even if you look at the training pictures and then now, um, it, it's like huge just says like, no, you're not going to, we're not going to have, we're not dealing with this. This is, you know, this is, that's not how we, how we do business. And so he, he seems to be, um, you know, n- maybe not excited, but just, positive and, and hardworking and have that kind of uh, just a little bit brighter maybe than Pellegrino and Puel. Um, yeah. But uh, we do have a, a few questions and then we'll kind of uh, get, get prepared for uh, uh, the next world cup match that's coming on soon. So at saints world FC uh, says, what are El Nusi's biggest strengths and what will he bring to the team? So um, we kind of talked about that, but if you could just recap uh, maybe yeah. what are his biggest attributes? Yeah. So he's, he's, Again, uh, I, I don't. Uh, this is this is the the hazy part of the the, the games where I'm can't quite remember the details. But yeah, you know the fact is he's, he's got pace. He scores. He's, he's he gets assists. He's continu- consistently got assists throughout his career. Um, he's a lot of energy, um, and I think um, yeah. I mean, I guess we need a striker that's going to put the goals in. But maybe one of the issues we had last year was Gabbiadini and any of our strikers not getting the service really. Um, and I, yeah, I'm optimistic that he he can do that. He gets assists. He's always done it. So he's always, he's, he's got it. Got them for Norway as well. So I, I suppose there there's a summary from me. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think this will be my uh, the, the the last bit of convincing I need to to find a Norway jersey, uh, just <laughs> just just for for him. But uh, even if we're not in the World Cup, and I have this thing where I only own um, international football shirts. Uh, of countries that are not in the world cup. So uh, that's oh, okay. exciting. Nice. I, I don't know why it's happened that way, but that, that's just how it's gone. <laughs> um, and then we have one from Dan who's at Holy Hoiberg. He says, including Marlon, uh, Marlon Santos, uh, who do you think are, is our best center back? So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a tough answer based on what I, I said before. I, <laughs> you know, I, I see attributes of all of them. Um, I've got a personal um, a soft spot for Jack Stevens because when I first started the podcast, back in like 2010 is shortly about a year or so after he'd signed from Plymouth, I think for like hundred K or whatever, or maybe a little, a little while after I can't remember. But the point was, um, you know, I was new to the whole podcast thing and I was, 
I set up my Twitter account basically just to sort of promote that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'd send these tweets to the odd player going, hey, at Matt Letiz, can you retweet? And, you know, Matt Letiz did once or twice, I think. But every month or every two weeks, because we had it fortnightly back in those days, every fortnight I'd send a tweet, hey, at Jack Stevens, would you give us a retweet for the podcast? And every time he retweeted me. So I, I thought, you know, what a great guy to do that to some bloke who's got, like, at the time, like 50 followers on Twitter. Um, <laughs> And, and I think that probably helped us get a few more people um, uh, in. And so, personally, uh, soft spot for him. I think he's a good player. I think, um, yeah, he's made a few mistakes, and maybe positionally, he kind of at times has been kind of caught napping. So, um, but I, I'm like you. I like I, I, I've really struggled with any of those to get. I, I think I've got a lot of soft spot for all of them. Yashid has been with us, you know, it's through thick and thin. Thin. He's seen a lot of players come and go, and and he's always there, ready. You know, how many years was he sat on the bench waiting? Right. And then when he was called upon, he would come and do a job, and I, and I like that. Um, so I suppose probably those two I really like. Um, and then Hoyt and um, Benarek, I think, are somewhat of the unknowns in, in the sense that they're still relatively new to the club. Um, anyway, I didn't ask your question. Probably the technically the best one I've seen, maybe it's Hoyt. Um, when, when he's, you know, last year at the end of the season, I felt like he was starting to take that leading role. Mm-hmm. So um, probably him. Okay, yeah. That was a long answer, wasn't it? No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I, I, because I don't know. Um, I, I. What do you? What, what do you think then? See, I, I'm going to get slated because I'm going to agree with you on, on that, and and that it's, that's Hoyt, and and I, I think he's probably technically the best center back we have. I don't think he's quite strong enough yet, you know. And that yeah. he's got a big body, but he's, you know, you're talking about guys being, you know, broad shouldered and all that stuff. Like, like I don't think he's there. I think if you stood him next to, um. To, to some of the other forwards, you, you know, you, I remember uh, specifically Lukaku just, just uh, overpowering him early on in the season. Uh, yeah. And I remember, uh, you know, like, like, I don't want that to happen. We got to have somebody that can stop that type of a uh, uh, forward. And he's just, he's just not there yet, but we don't have anybody else who's there yet. So it, that kind of, you take that out of the equation, but um, you know, he, he's, he, he probably has the highest ceiling, I would say um, mm. just based on the, the technical skills that he has. Um, and I'm left footed as well. So I kind of got to go with him. So, um, <laughs> nice. so yeah, I, 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 w- I would go with him as well, but, uh, we'll see. And we have to see how, how Marlon Santos does. I don't know enough about him other than, you know, looking at stats and looking at stats for defenders is always, always difficult because yeah, you know, uh, goals and assists aren't really what we're looking at. Um, and you know, depending on what your team, how your team plays, um, you know, clearances and, and blocks and things like that. Some, some players don't have that because their teams are in possession all the time, but, um, yeah. so, so we'll see, but, um, Andrew, thank you. Uh, this has been this has been great. I've had a lot of fun. Um, Pleasure. And uh, I don't know. Enjoy the rest of the World Cup. And if if Switzerland and England get together, you have to let us know how that how that goes for you. Yeah, maybe I'll take a, a selfie with some angry Swiss people around me. I mean, I suppose they might be happy depending on how England play. But um, I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, no, uh, it's been great to come on, and uh, it's always good to talk about Saints. I uh, you know that's the one thing I, I you asked me earlier about things I miss doing, and it's a uh, having these sorts of conversations in depth uh, with other Saints fans because there aren't any here. So uh, it's great to have a chat and uh, happy to speak in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and one more thing, if, if there's any news coming out of Switzerland about Shakiri and where he might go, I mean, let us know. Cause yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now we're, we're dealing with all these rumors on these papers that I don't know what they're saying really. Yeah. No, it's funny. I was actually, I was on the tram last night, um, just coming home uh, from, from a night out and, uh, they have the sort of the rolling news uh, on the tram, just um, you know, one of the screens, and it's quite cool because it had, uh, in my bad Swiss German, uh, but it said, uh, you know, uh, Southampton uh, FC Basel uh, player Mohamed Onusi moves to Southampton. I'm like, wow, cool, Southampton on the on the Swiss tram. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll let you know if I hear any hear any news, uh, or if I spot any, uh, if I'm in my scouting and I spot any uh, any gems that we can uh, send back home. Yeah, yeah, just get it'll get you less reads number, and you just you just start letting them know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a have a good day, and thanks a lot, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Great, thank you. And that does it for this episode of the Southampton Delivery Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you to my guest Andrew Walker, who's on Twitter at Saints Podcast and on Instagram at Andy Doobie A eight four. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for taking the time uh, to talk with me. Uh, Hopefully sometime we'll meet up in Southampton uh, because I don't foresee myself going to Switzerland uh, anytime soon. 
can contact this show on Twitter or Instagram at SFCDELL underscore IVERY. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SFC delivery. You can email the show at Southampton delivery at gmail.com. However you want to send feedback, we'll take it. I'd also appreciate it if you use the hashtag SFC Dell when you submit questions or anything else having to do with the show. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to the feed on iTunes, Stitcher, Acast, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, uh, or wherever else you get your podcast to make sure that you don't miss an episode. The links are in the show notes to make that easier. Uh, I hope it does, and I hope you will, and I hope you'll share the show with others that you think may enjoy it. If you are enjoying the show, please consider leaving a review on iTunes. It really does help out. It helps other people discover the show, uh, and it's much, much appreciated. We are partnered with the Southampton page, so be sure to check them out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The links are in the show notes. Uh, They have lots and lots of great Southampton-related content coming out all the time. Our logo is designed by Matt Beeling of the We Are Southampton page on Instagram. For match day edits, polls, competitions, and more, be sure to check out the We Are Southampton page on Instagram. Music for the show comes courtesy of the Free Music Archive at freemusicarchive.org. The intro song is Epic Song by Boxcat Games. And the end of show credits that you're listening to right now is Aim is True by Pottington Bear. That's it for this week. I hope that you've enjoyed the show. Uh, Once again, please do share, subscribe, like. uh, Check out the Instagram page, especially. uh, I started to do, I don't know what they're called, um, pictures. They're nice, I think. And if they're not nice, tell me and I'll change them. Uh, or I'll try to get better. But until then, uh, until next time, remember that together, we march on.